Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Winnie. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. Bit of a salty topic today, Paul. Salt lick. Salt lick. Interesting salt licks. Oh, before we start, yeah. I just wanted to let people know that if they want to donate to our hospital, there's a link in the description. Some people have been asking about you know, how to donate to the hospital. You kind of pay it forward. Pay it. Pay it. For, well, that kind of jinxes you. Doesn't that make it seem like you're going to need the hospital if you pay it forward? Well, not really. So, like the term pay it forward historically, they think, mm-hmm. so it was started by a lady, Lily Hardy Hammond, an author in her book, Garden of Delight, where she said, you don't pay love back, you pay it forward. So the thought is rather than when you're a recipient of a good deed, Mm -hmm. rather than pay it back to that person, you pay it on to somebody else and kind of keep it rolling. Garden of Delight? Garden of Delight. You have a vegetable garden at home, don't you? It is my garden of delight. I was gonna say, have you ever thought of transitioning it to a garden of delight? (laughs) It already is. I hate to see what grows in that. Yeah, kale, for sure. Okay, so today we are talking about Salt. Actually, nobody actually asked where to donate. I got a cup clean. <laughs> I'm just saying. I yeah. thought I'd say that to encourage people, but sure. just to be transparent. Totally transparent. No one's ever well, and in Canada, this. medicine is, is not for profit, right? So yeah. the hospitals are always looking to raise money to buy like stuff. And you don't have to donate to our hospital. Sure. Donate if you enjoy local. these videos, pay it forward. Sure. Donate to your local hospital. Do something nice for somebody, even on the hospital. Just donate pay, something. Pay it nice. backwards if you got to. Just <laughs> pay it. Okay. So, salt. This is not a controversial topic, despite what you might see on other YouTubers channels who are purported health experts. It is shocking what people will say in order to get people to do. So, salt, excess salt particularly, is not good for you. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. And it has many, many negative health consequences. And our society is addicted, Mm -hmm. addicted to salt. So Mm -hmm. salt is sodium chloride, so two molecules. A sodium molecule and a chloride, it's about 40% sodium. 60% 60% chloride. NaCl for those of you in grade eight. Right, so back in the day, we didn't really have salt. We didn't add salt to anything, but as we started to eat more meat and caught wild animals and wanted to preserve them, we didn't have a fridge or a freezer, they used salt to preserve them. And nowadays, particularly restaurants and processed food companies, they yeah. salt everything in order to preserve it, but also to flavor taste, it. A big part taste. of your flavor is salt. Mm-hmm. Especially and, restaurants, man. Yes. Holy cow, stuff you come home, salty. you're like so thirsty. Yeah. The yeah. next day, your wife, my wife and I always say that. We're like, what the heck? Why am I so thirsty? Osmosis. Yeah. So that's also why there's actually a huge pushback when anyone says anything negative about salt because these companies rely on salt in order to accomplish some of their goals. Just yeah. like sugar industry did, just like the fat industry did. All these industries are designed to make money and they have to uh, spin or negatively spin real science about, uh, about salt. So, so would you say salt is like the first food preservative? I, th- I think it was, for sure. So our bodies need actually a very small amount, about 500 milligrams a day. That's like half a gram. Half a gram. A gram is one centimeter cubed of water. Right, and one gram of refined table salt actually has 2,300 milligrams of salt. So what we need is about, about a quarter of a teaspoon. That's just what you're putting in your tea in the morning. Right. Tea. No way. No. That's sugar. <laughs> avid tea drinker over here. I don't drink a lot of tea. <laughs> no, don't. Uh, because you don't it tastes so salty. <laughs> Funny. I can't finish it. Okay. So, what it, oh, that's ridiculous. So, when it comes to salt, there's actually no RDA. So, the recommended daily allowance is more for things like vitamins and minerals and things that actually have measurable toxic doses. So, for salt, the, there's not enough evidence to show that a certain amount is actually toxic. Despite its link to chronic disease, um, what they've done is there are other recommendations about, about adequate um, daily intake, and they've set that number at about 1,500. Yeah, so... Can you, you, okay. No, 15. I was going to say, can you venture a guess what the average consumption of salt in the U.S. is? Just because there's more American data than Canadian data. Okay, so you need... We're just as salty. You need 500 milligrams. Yeah. And the average, what was the 1,500? They, they advise the adequate index is about 1,500. This is based on a whole bunch of studies. So usually they overshoot what you okay. need. Okay, okay. So I'm going to guess that the average person doubles that. Yes, 3,400 milligrams is the average daily consumption for, for, salt. for Americans. And I think they actually say Canadians are even saltier. That's why these pretzels are making me thirsty. thirsty. Right. So 1,500, that is like, honestly, one piece of bacon. There's, and, and chicken, ironically, chicken is full of salt. Do you know why chicken is so salty? 
No. So it's a really interesting thing. It's not because chickens like salty stuff. It's because chicken producers inject the chicken with salt water in order to plump them up to Ooh, increase their weight. That's cheating. Yeah, it's a little tricky. So yeah, so I, that's why I prefer the wing portion where the salt doesn't get into. So half that's of an not scientific half of an average size chicken breast actually has over 800 milligrams of sodium. So already you're you're at a significant disadvantage, and you haven't even gone out to a restaurant yet. Okay, get the table salt off your table. Right. So that brings into kind of the next discussion. So a lot of people are like, well, I don't eat I don't I don't eat the regular salt. I do I do like kosher salt, which is really just a coarser version of that salt. Or I do. Uh, Himalayan sea salt. Do you know how they make that? From the Himalayans? So, so, so the Himalayan pink sea salt is mined from mines in Pakistan. It's the iron oxide that makes it pink. But, but sea salt is actually from dehydration process of salt of water. Of course, that's I how know, you get natural water. But it seems, water. Like, it seems like yeah. a long process to get a bunch of salt. Well, that's how you get salt from the ocean. Yeah. I, know. I think they might even do it on uh, like cruise ships. I think they might have like a rapid sort of desalter. Oh, makes that desalinator. Yeah. yeah, and I think to be honest, South Africa because they're actually in a freshwater crisis. That that's yeah. been a big business. To try if to... you're ever trapped on a desert island in the ocean and you need salt, yeah. you can get like a bowl or get a coconut thing of salt water, and then with your saran wrap that you must have handy, make a pyramid above it, and then another dish bigger so it evaporates, condenses, and then draws down into the bigger dish where you'll have fresh water. Because you need fresh water, you will actually never cure your dehydration with salt water. No. It's actually dangerous. No, you'll dehydrate. Osmosis. Yeah. Uh-huh. The high solute content outside the cells of the salt will draw the water out of the cells. I feel like that's like a castaway. Tom Hanks by himself with that volleyball. Wilbur. Kind of thing. Was it Wilbur? No. Uh, I don't know. Stan or Dan. No, or I don't know. Someone's going to put it in the comments. Yeah, I guarantee what you. was his football's name? I don't know. It was a volleyball. What was his volleyball's <laughs> name? Okay. I got the name wrong and the ball wrong. Let's salt in your tea. Okay. So why does excess salt matter to us? So excess salt is retained by our bodies and our kidneys are the ones that manage the salt. But if we have excess salt, that comes with excess, excess fluid. That excess fluid leads to excess blood volume. And when our blood volume is bigger, it leads to stiffening of the vessels. Yeah. Our heart has to work hard. So this increases your risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and even stomach cancer. The volume is not the stomach cancer problem, it's the salt and probably the salt delivery system, particularly the meats um, that lead to an increased, direct increased risk of stomach cancer. And some of you might have noticed too, if you have a high salt intake one meal, yep. you get swollen up. You'll have like you do. swelling of your ankles, you'll feel puffy, you'll feel swollen. For sure. And the last thing that excess salt does is, as it is um, excreted in your urine, a lot of times with it goes calcium. Wilson. Wilson, nice. Yeah, because that's the company. Yeah, the, right. the, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you obviously weren't focusing on salt the last bit. 30 seconds. No. So it pulls out calcium, so it actually can lead to osteopenia and osteoporosis. So Salt is really, really bad for you if you take too much of it. Okay, so what is it? What about low salt? Someone's gonna say, oh yeah, well, you know what? My grandpa was in long-term oh, okay. care yeah. and he had low salt actually, so he should not have low salt. There are some rare metabolic conditions that can happen that okay. can give you low salt. But it's not because of what you eat typically. No, it's no. not typically. It's not typically called caused by lack of intake of salt. Right. So that's called hyponatremia, and it's mm-hmm. usually caused by excess losses. So sweating, vomiting, mm-hmm. diarrhea, medications, and like you had mentioned, some more yeah. rare metabolic conditions. Yeah. So in, in those in those cases, uh, you know, under medical supervision, you may need some sort of salt in the diet that you're taking in. But for the average person, right, you don't need to add salt. To you anything. shouldn't. We actually. Do you ever add salt to anything? Every now and then, a tiny sprinkle. Yeah. I feel yeah. guilty every time I do it. I do a little bit too, yeah, especially but cooking. I certainly cooking. reduced a lot, though. I say I put on before I cook the thing. Right. And there are off. some newer kind of salts, including potassium-based salts that actually have similar taste, yeah. um, but no salt, and that's. Potassium sodium mm. uh, relationship we've talked about before in some of the other high blood pressure videos yeah. is that it swaps out. So potassium foods push out the sodium that helps reduce. That's your probably sodium. not going to be good for you either because especially no. if you have kidney disease, you have to watch right. out for your potassium levels. Hundred percent. So just, just ease eat up normal on food. Just don't add salt to your food. Yeah. There you go. So if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, and maybe don't eat so much salt. <laughs> if you do like this video, I'll be surprised because we were kind of all over the place. Thanks for sticking it out to the end if you did. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time and don't put salt in your tea.